My name is Sam Blanchard, and I'm here from Virginia Tech uh, University, and we're presenting Seymour here at the conference. Seymour is a 256-node uh, parallel cluster computer. It's a bunch of little uh, efforts making one large computation. Uh, it's also a kinetic sculpture, and so uh, each of the computers is mounted on an articulating arm, and so as the computation is uh, is given to a head node, one computer. It's spread throughout uh, the 256. And once individual computer gets its task, that arm articulates based on how much that individual part is being uh, computed. So the patterns that develop are what are usually inside of the computer and unseen. So this is an effort to physically visualize uh, what is usually the the hidden black box technology. The computer itself, the footprint, is very similar to an early supercomputer called the Cray-1 supercomputer, invented by Seymour Cray. Uh, hence, we've sort of adopted the name to as Seymour. Of course, ours is spelled S-E-E-M-O-R-E, -E -E, so it's more like Seymour inside of what's going on the computer. It was an era very interesting to me, design-wise, in, in computers, because they were just coming off of room-sized computers, and sort of they moved into this world of computers that were kind of furniture pieces and had much more character. They weren't just cabinets. They were uh, all sorts of shapes and sizes. And so when I was researching, my colleague uh, Kirk Cameron in computer science at the university came to me and things developed. The project got bigger and bigger. When we decided to initiate this project, I started researching the history of supercomputing because I didn't really know much about that. I, I teach sculpture and creative technologies in a school of visual arts at the university. So not very familiar with, with uh, parallel computers at all, but um, I learned a lot about the evolution of them and so uh, what they do uh, and uh, sort of early iterations of them uh, starting in like that early 80s, late 70s time period really influenced the design. So the footprint is reminiscent of this Cray-1 computer, which was sort of a cylinder with a pie shape taken out of it. So you see the pie shape on the back side of this piece. And because these types of computers are usually used uh, to, to do like fluid dynamic simulation or uh, weather patterns and things like that, the idea of fluidity really became a, a large, um, a, a large uh, theme throughout. So, you know, like the blues that you see um, in the acrylic, but also like the sweeping motions, like the downward sweeping motions, and also that it, it hourglasses, it's like a wave building form. So there are a lot of little little things, even the, uh, the movement of the arms themselves, instead of just flapping out and coming back in, they actually sort of articulate out in a wave form. So uh, a lot of small details sort of built into there, but sort of surrounding themes of fluidity and, 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 um, and water. But yeah, we started with a sort of salute to that really early uh, computer design. There's 256 computers, and within that 256, there's one called the head node that tells everybody else what to do. Each computer is given a small part of that large task to complete. So the head node sends out signals to all of the other computers and says, and, and divvies it up, right? It just tell, it's, like the, um, it's like the coach. It just tells everybody their assignment. When they're complete with their assignment, they report back to that head node. And so when the articulating arm moves out, that's when it has, that individual computer has re received its mission for that computation. And then HeadNode compiles everything, and that's what you see come out on the computer screen. What caught me first was uh, the, um, the exhibition title, Acting in Translation. I mean, that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to take what's inside of the computer, and we're sort of trying to translate it in a physical form so that other people um, so that we can, we can sort of explain to people what goes on inside of these supercomputers, which is uh, something, you know, rarely uh, few people know about. So it really fit with our project very well. There's also a op great opportunity to get some international exposure for the project. This is the first place we've shown it, and we wanted to be on a really big stage for that. So there's really no place better than the Seagraph Art Gallery for something like that. So many people here, uh, there aren't a lot of venues like this out there um, that bring together technology and art in the way that um, myself and my colleagues at Virginia Tech have been able to bring together technology and art. So it fit very well for us. It's a really big team effort. We have four students from our computer science department here. We have two 
uh, students from my, um, the School of Visual Arts here. Uh, I'm a professor in the School of Visual Arts. Kirk is a computer science professor. Uh, and probably the most satisfying part about this whole project is that we've, you know, it's one of the few opportunities uh, and few projects, uh, I can say objectively, that I've seen that is really a true collaboration between um, the, the art and technology in, within academia. So uh, we're all really proud of it.